Hello, hello. Are we live? I think we are. <laughs> I believe so. All right. Hey, Lindsay. <laughs> Let's just make sure we'll wait a couple seconds, let people kind of file in. I see that we are live. Got some folks in the room. Okay, we got the thumbs up from our stage manager. Good. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this evening's event. I am Christopher Charles McDaniel. I'm a company artist with Dance Theater of Harlem, as well as the social media coordinator. And it's such a thrill to be with you all tonight for our first event of DTH On Demand. Um, we are talking about the incredible ballet passage, choreographed by Claudia Schreier and with incredible music by Jesse Montgomery. Um, and what better way to kick off Black History Month? Um, so I'm very, 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 very excited. <laughs> so um, quick little background. Um, I actually met Claudia way back in 2009 or 10. Um, she kind of slid into my DMs on Twitter because uh, she needed a dancer um, for a ballet she was producing um, for a show at the Ailey City Group Theater. And uh, one of our mutual friends told her that I learned quickly. So she went ahead and reached out to me. Um, and so we connected then. And then fast forward to 2018, uh, we were brought back together at Dance Theater to create Passage. Um, I was in her original cast, but unfortunately I suffered a hand injury moments before our first public uh, showing for APAP. Um, so I wasn't in the premiere of the ballet, but I did get to dance it once, um, one time. And we were preparing to do it again in Detroit before the pandemic hit. But um, it's been a pleasure working with Claudia in front of the room, helping maintain the counts and the choreography and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's my my connection with Passage. And uh, let's throw it over to Lindsay. What about you, Lindsay? All right, and I am Lindsay Donnell, and I'm so happy to be here with you tonight, Christopher. Um, I was not in the original cast of Passage, but I was able to be in the room um, while it was being created. And so that was a really beautiful experience just to see how everything came together, um, which is why we're excited to be here tonight. Um, nice. So first, we wanted to walk everybody through um, a little preview of the ballet. Um, that way you can know kind of what we're talking about, get a sense um, if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and of course, all building up towards Saturday's showing. Um, so without any further ado, here is our sizzle. I just love this ballet. I love that music. It just like, oh, it just picks me up. <laughs> I know it does, right? It's so it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's haunting. It's, it stays with you. Yes. Um, so shall we get our dancers out here? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get some dancers out. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to start by introducing Amanda Smith. Um, she is from California and um has been with the company now three years i think four years i 
the whole COVID year, <laughs> it makes years disappear. So um, yeah, in her fourth season, thank you for being here, Amanda. Thank you yes. for having me. <laughs> Yes, Mandy. Next, we are going to bring on my best friend, <laughs> Anthony Santos. Um, he has one of the uh, featured spots in the ballet. So, hey, Anthony, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. And now we'll bring on Crystal Serrano. Hello, Crystal. Always gorgeous. Um, you can tell she inspired my pony. So we're, we always <laughs> We're like pony sisters right now. Um, but she is from Seattle and has also been with the company for years. Yes. Thanks, Liz. Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. So I'm trying to get my bearings here. I believe up next is going to be the gorgeous Miss Daphne Lee. Hey, Daphne. Daphne and I go way back. Hey. <laughs> hey, everyone. Again, happy to be here. <laughs> and I will get the pleasure of introducing Dustin James. He's a fellow Texan. Um, always wonderful. Good evening, everyone. Oh. Nice to be here. Good evening. All righty. So we've got Dustin in. Let's see. Who are we bringing on next? I think it is Mr. Quadia. Claudio Davis, welcome. Hello, good evening. And at last, we'll finish it off with Yannette Fernandez. Um, one of our uh, teachers always calls her spicy Cuban. Uh, she's always, always wonderful, always warm. Hello. <laughs> yes. Say hi to the people, Yannette. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, cool, cool, cool. Yes, it's so great to see everyone and have everyone on. Um, this is our very first event of the of this DTH on demand season, so it's really exciting. We have some nerves. We have all of that great stuff. Uh, shout out to Claudia if you're watching and Jesse, we love you, um, and we are so excited to talk about this magnificent work. So let's go ahead and get started with some questions. Uh, just so the audience members know, everyone watching in YouTube land and Facebook world, um, go ahead and write a question in the chat if you have anything you want to know throughout the evening, and we'll get to those. All right? All right, let's get started. Get my order up on here. OK, Dexter. Sorry, my pup is <laughs> some attention today. OK. All right, so we're gonna start with Daphne, yes. Uh, let's talk about, sorry, I'm really, you know, live theater, even online is. It's always a thing, right? It it's is. always a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. the beauty of it. So would you like to start off with Daphne or? Yeah, okay, I'll, let's jump right in. So Daphne, um, so Passage is about like a 20 minute long ballet. It's pretty, uh, pretty lengthy ballet. Um, how long did it take to create the piece? Yeah, how long did it take to create the piece? Man, <laughs> I think it was several months. I think um, the cool thing about working with different choreographers is that in my experience, um, choreographers can take as little as one week or as long as six months. And in Claudia Schreier's case, you're not only working with choreography, but you're working with her composer, um, Jesse Montgomery, which, you know, there's so many different musicalities, counts, you know, the artists in general. So it took a little bit of time and I remember we had to pause for a moment, but yeah, definitely a few months. So when you're watching it and you're just seeing 20 minutes, definitely know that there was a lot more hard work that went into it and a lot more time. Absolutely. Yes, these things always take so much more time, I think, than anyone ever realizes. And even us as dancers, I am always surprised how long it takes to actually bring a work from idea into fruition. Right, especially because we're a touring company. So between getting things started, we're on the road. And so you have to pause there and then pick back up. So, yeah. Yeah, that was especially one of the things I think with Claudia's work was that it was done in segments. So. 
Um, so Anthony, you are a primary character in this ballet. Um, I know you're one of the, the first kind of people we see and all of that. Um, is there a storyline behind your work or how do you approach that? Uh, well, that's a great question. I do, I definitely think there is a storyline in the ballet. Um, and for me, my perspective, I feel like I am the future and Derek, who's also a primary character, is the past. Um, and it's these moments of coming together and everything in between are those moments that happen throughout life. Um, and so, um, yeah, I try to carry that on with me every time I go on stage. Uh, you know, it's kind of who knows what the future has in hold for us. So, you know, it's great to be able to like each time it's a fresh start, a fresh feeling. Um, but yeah, that's my perspective of the ballet, the past and the future becoming one. Mm. I say, when I watch it, I always see like life and death. So I love that that's, a, you know, how broad the interpretation is. It's really powerful. I never really thought about it that way. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of your central part, and you mentioned Derek, shout out to Derek Brockington if you're watching. Um, in this ballet, we're going to um, ask Dustin a question here. There's so much partnering in the ballet. And within you know the typical partnering, we always see where the man partners the woman and so forth and so on. In Passage, there's a lot of um, male and male partnering. So what's that like for you? And is there a difference partnering a man versus when you're partnering a woman? Um, there certainly are differences. Um, the main one being is men don't really tend to like being partnered. Um, I myself had a lift where Derek, who is very strong, uh, a very strong partner, very nice, very good to work with. Um, I did a lift with him where I had to go upside down and I was terrified nearly pretty much every time I've done it, even though I know that he's reliable and great and safe to work with. Um, I think it's just the uh, men tend to have a fear of not being in control because typically with partnering, uh, you're in control of the woman and you have to build a trust relationship with her. And, and when that is flipped, men tend to be a little bit more held back and reserved. So that's kind of the ma major difference between dancing with men and women as far as partnering. That's a good point. I think Anthony wants to jump in there. Yeah. I completely agree with Dustin. Um, there's a lot of moments in the ballet where I'm like lifted upside down from Derek. And no matter how many times I do it, I'm always like in the air, like, holy crap, just please make sure I land on my feet. So um, yeah, Dustin, I agree with you, Dustin. It's, um, it's a whole different world. So shout out to all the women who are lifted every day and they just like yeah. force go for it. Like shout out to you. Fearless ladies, <laughs> Crystal. You have to really be brave. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Um, to go off of Anthony, I just remember being in rehearsals, and ladies, you guys can chime in, but I remember we're just like watching them, and they're really scared. And, you know, usually we don't we don't see them be scared, and we're like kind of giggling in the back. <laughs> they're like it's easy to just let go <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> it's just it was just really funny to see that part <laughs> <laughs> that's so true so true um just uh uh daphne i saw your hand fly up it's also really awe-inspiring when you do watch passage and hopefully you get a chance to watch it this weekend just the height of these men you know dth men are quite long and and, and when you see them go in the air it's just quite fascinating and to see it on stage too. So you have to take a look at the work and just be like in awe of just the patterns, how the men are lifted, how the women are also lifted. It's just a lot of dope partnering by Claudia. Yes, shout out to Claudia. And she's in the room. I saw her name pop up in the chat. So let's all give Claudia a hey girl, hey. <laughs> hey girl. <laughs> I love it. Um, all righty, let's... Um, that, it's so funny we were talking about the partnering because now I'm really remembering back to when Claudia first put in that upside down lift that Dustin mentioned. Um, 
And she looked at me when she asked me to do it. And it's like, are you afraid of heights? And I was like, no, I'm not scared. No, I'm not scared, but I was terrified. <laughs> terrified. <laughs> um, so let's swing it over to Amanda. Um, so Claudia's vocabulary is very um, eclectic and it's, there's a lot of uh, meshing of different styles. Um, there's a very beautiful contemporary sensibility um, with of course a strong technique. And um, I feel like you're one of those dancers who can do all the styles. What is that like for you, you know, meshing those different influences? Um, yeah, uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I think Claudia did a great job of combining the st structure and the um, the classical aspect of um, of like the court of ballet and staying in line and keeping a line. But at the same time, she allowed this like sense of freedom um, and uh, a feeling of letting go. I feel like throughout the entire ballet, uh, we are making and creating these beautiful shapes um, and positions, but at the same time, there's this sense of like vulnerability. Um, I feel like, especially in the partnering. Uh, also when I do my, solo in the beginning of the ballet-ish or beginning in the middle, I come out of the corner with this like explosive balance, balance. So typically, you know, it's a balance, balance, we saw Ron Chate into Derek's arms, but it's more so an explosion of da 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 into Derek's arms, fly away. And that's kind of how Claudia described it as well. So it was really awesome to kind of connect to um, you know, of being, a, you know, the classical aspect as well as the freedom and the sense of just like releasing all the tension within yourself and being able to do that passage. And I think that um, my fellow castmates have done such a wonderful job of doing that as well. So it's, it's so wonderful to be able to bring that on the stage um, to see, oop, AirPod fell out, um, to see that and be able to to dance that is wonderful. Yes, I feel like you really exemplify that releasing of all the tension because you just like, like you said, you explode from the wings and then there's that uh, duet you do with Anthony where you, I just feel like you're so gooey and like, so great. Yes, and as like for like uh, the character part of it, um, I remember you and I, Lindsay would talk about like what my character kind of represented because there's a little bit of this sense of, um, well, we talk, we would say like she's the queen of the underworld, and she like kind of entices Anthony and brings him to this dark side, you know, um, which is kind of fun to play with on stage. But at the same time, I guess in a more like uh, real aspect, a little on a more serious note, I think throughout the ballet, there's this again like the sense of freedom and letting go. At the same time, there is this like underlying darkness and haunting that's behind it all, um, which is kind of like the reality of life. Um, and I think it's amazing what Claudia has, Claudia has done. Beautifully said. Did you have something to add, Anthony? Yeah, um, when she said, um, she mentioned how Claudia described um, certain moments in the ballet. And I think it really did help because she, I feel like she trusted us with the classical and contemporary aspect of the ballet that the way she would say certain um, um, phrases or the way she would describe how she wants this section to feel, it was so specific that um, you, you, you really had to go into it with like a vulnerable state, which was really um, incredible. You know, she really trusted us with the whole classical and contemporary um, genre of dance and she she knew that that was there so she it was incredible the way she described certain sections um, the vocabulary she used I loved it absolutely well um, oh, no go ahead go ahead <laughs> well I was actually gonna take it on to talk a little bit more about the music um, again by Jesse Montgomery um, it was a score composed just for this ballet um, so, Yannette, I was wondering, um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what it was like um, to dance the live music? Because we did get to do that uh, for this. Yeah, um, 
the music is gorgeous. Like when you watch it on uh, Saturday, you listen and it's just amazing. And I feel like the music and the lights there um it makes the piece come to life like that's my opinion and also dancing with live music it makes such a huge difference because you can feel that battle in your heart and also you can just like it drives you to do that and to like it's like a feeling like it creates like a, a vibe in the stage so yeah so it's just stunning Yes, I love that. I really do love that music so much. And uh, just for our viewers, one of the really incredible things about this um, this commission score and us dancing to live music was that when you looked into the orchestra pit, Jesse Montgomery was playing a violin with the quartet that played the music. And it was just incredible that you have this composer make this music, you see her in the studio interacting with Claudia, but then when we're all getting ready for performance and we all have our performance jitters and we're walk coming to stage, our stage manager, Heather, is calling places and you see Jesse coming with the, and it's just like, it's, it's incredible. I thought it was just really, really a special thing to have her out there with us. Yeah. Um, just amazing. I also thought it was cool that uh, we started the ballet before the piece was uh, even finished, choreographed or um, comp being composed. Right. That was kind of a fun thing to to not even know what the end would be like. Like no one knew what it would be like. And I think Claudia and Jesse worked together really closely in order to to like make that finished product happen. Right. Yeah. And you know, we and we'll we'll probably talk about this later on, but we're so used to as dancers counting our music and that kind of keeps a safety net where we know exactly where we're supposed to be. And so I remember at one point during a rehearsal, we're all counting, maybe we were counting it in sixes or something. And Jesse was like, well, no, actually that's, you should count that in a, as a nine. And then it all started making sense for us. Do we remember that? We were all like, oh, no, actually, sorry, it was sevens. We were counting sixes or something. And she's like, no, this whole section is sevens. And then it all just started just flowing so nicely. And it's like, you have that, you know, you have that music, you have the composer telling you how to count it. Then when we're playing it live or doing it with live music, she's in the pit. Tanya Leon was conducting for us. <laughs> like, and I'm a DTH baby, I'm a bunhead. So I grew up, you know, with all of the, the DTH music being composed and all of that kind of stuff. But Tanya Leon is a very special uh, Cuban composer who did the music for Dubla and several other ballets. So when she conducted Passage for us, it was incredible seeing her and Jesse, you know, collaborating on this. And um, it's just a powerful, just girl power, power to the women. <laughs> Speaking of women, the question that I have for Crystal, um, right now we're in this new phase in the world where we're finally seeing uh, more women choreograph uh, choreographers, excuse me, and oftentimes the, uh, women aren't given as many opportunities. Uh, luckily at DTH, we always have amazing women coming in to make ballets for us or set ballets or state works for us. Sorry, we have a little uh, feedback. Um, but for Crystal, um, in your career, have you danced to many? Uh, have you danced many ballets choreographed by women? And what's the difference between working with male choreographers versus women choreographers? I will say that probably the most at DTH um, have I worked with women choreographers. Um, but it's been really amazing. And I'd like to say that there is one thing that separates them. But honestly, there isn't much to say about the difference. Um, I feel like women, it just seems like they know that they're rare and so they come with their A game. Not that men don't, but I just feel that power, that um, era right away from them. And um, also I feel like my favorite part working with women is they grab a guy and they start being like, okay, do this, this, and this with me. And they try it out, which I love to see, you know, working with Claudia, she'd be like, okay, grab me here and we're gonna do this, this, and see if it works, you know? And then she's also 
especially Claudia, she was really understanding, how does this feel? Okay, try it this way. And a lot of choreographers are like that, but there was something about Claudia that she was just so calm. Um, her demeanor was so understanding, but also knew what she wanted. So she would say, okay, try this. And then if it was a little bit harder, she would give her two cents and then be like, that's what I want, you know? And so it was really special working with her. And she had this sense of patience and ease. So that was really great to be a part of. Absolutely. Um, so good. Um, <laughs> so good, so good. Um, yeah, so thank you for that, Crystal. Um, we'll go ahead and take it over to Claudio. He actually, you weren't here when we were creating it and then you had to learn it um, for one of the performances. So can you tell us about what that's like? Yeah, um, so when I came to DTH, I think this was my second performance and we were at Kennedy Center and that's by far the biggest theater I've ever been in. Uh, so that was really crazy just by itself. And when I came, it was like seven days or eight days that I had to learn this piece. And I had never learned anything that was longer than probably like three minutes or four minutes. Maybe actually I had done Dougla at that point. So I had one thing under my belt, but it was a, there was a big learning curve. And I remember that we, Claudia was very patient with me though, and sat me down. We worked in her hotel room leading up to the, uh, to the performance at Kennedy Center. And I had notes even, I mean, through the performances. So we did, uh, I think one and two were good. And then the third performance was really rough. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I remember I like called my mom and, and I was just like very worried, but, but it was, I learned a lot in the, in the moment. We went out for the fourth performance and Claudia did not, uh, kind of get in my head. She was very understanding and just was like a, you know, it's good. It was fine how it was. And, and then for that fourth performance, I was really able to, to relax a little bit more. And now this is actually a piece that I'm like the most comfortable with. This is like, that, that's in our canon. Uh, and actually one of my favorite pieces for the men, the beginning is, is really difficult. It starts out kind of like a canon and you are blasted out and we do all of this. So it's literally like the most difficult dancing in the beginning, um, in my opinion. And then that music that we, that Yannette was talking about that we've all been talking about uh, is so beautiful and just kind of carries you that by the beat, by the middle of the, uh, the beginning of the middle, sorry, I am so tired, uh, but I can kind of just like fall back into the music uh, and let it carry me through the rest of the piece. So this is a, yeah, this is a really wonderful piece. And thank you, Claudia, for working with me so diligently. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, you did a fabulous job, I have to say, jumping in like that. You could never have told that, or you would never have known that you hadn't been there from the beginning. So yes, good job. Claudia. Um, Anthony, you have something to add? Well, every time Quadio speaks about that, I always forget that he um, jumped on the passage train so late. And I think a lot of us will probably feel the same way. We were so in such a like, um, a like routine with passage where we were getting comfortable with the stamina and the choreography and the music that I don't, I, I always forget that he came in the game so late for passage, but he did such a great job at just like stepping up to the plate, so. Go Claudio. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can I say uh, too, talking about the the technicalities of Claudia's choreography, it's really crazy. This piece is like twenty minutes long, and I think I only have one time where I have to cross backstage. So she had designed it in this way where I I just didn't have to cross over. So that was a huge help when I was trying to learn because often, like the side that I went off. That was the side I was supposed to be on. And I'd just come back on from that side. And if I went off the other side, then that was the side I would be on. So that was a huge feat of, des uh, feat of design, I would say, on Claudia's part. 
That's such a good point. I love that there are <laughs> like when there are very little crossovers because you can get to that side of stage. You can just breathe and think about what's next. And you know, we've been on some places. We've been some places where people didn't make it. <laughs> I've been to places where you know someone's supposed to cross over and you're in the zone. Something happens and then you just don't make it up. Knock on wood, <laughs> um, Crystal. I saw your hand up. <laughs> My favorite memory about um, this piece, I think it was the first time that we, maybe it was a dress rehearsal, but Amanda, I can't stop laughing about this one time because Amanda and I, like um, Quadio says, you're just in and out, in and out, in and out. And there's, we're literally in and out every two seconds. And then there was this one time where with all, there was like fog and the music going and all, everything put together, I was like, even though I was literally right where I was supposed to be for my next entrance, I was like, Amanda, what's next? And she's like, but then I was like, oh, I know where, because we were literally right where we were supposed to be, but we could not stop laughing about that moment. But it was like Daphne said, 20 minutes, just in and out, in and out. I think Daphne also said that too, but it was um, just a really fun moment and incredible piece. <laughs> Amanda, yes, go ahead. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite moments by far. I don't know why I freaked out. I, I guess it was because it was the first time with costumes and life and music and the stage. But when she asked me that question, I was in an immediate state of fear. I was like, oh! <gasps> and Lisa did on stage, like, I don't know, it was the craziest thing, but it's something that I'll always remember because, I mean, yeah, like uh, Crystal said and Daphne, it, it is so much in and out that there was just like immediate, like, wait, is this the right place? I don't know. Um, but it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Yes. Well, do we, um, so this is actually about to be our last questions that we have prepared. So just to all the viewers, if you haven't written any questions into YouTube um, and have more to ask the dancers, please go ahead and keep typing. Um, and so the last one for Daphne, um, this was this part, um, we call it the swims. Um, it was shown in the sizzle video, and that's always an audience favorite. Um, so we were wondering, since you are one of the swimmers, what does it feel like? And yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful moment because I'm I'm gonna give you a little pre-COVID context. But when that curtain goes up, there's a cool rush of air that comes in, and I'm sure Crystal can talk about that. Um, the other ladies too, because you guys start. But that moment where you're in the wings and you're in the air and you're about to dive forward, um, it's just amazing. But it's also very technical because each of the guys has to be able to maneuver me in a way um, that we're all using our energy. Even me, I have to control myself going down. Dustin is pulling me up by the feet. It's really quite beautiful. And when we do it right, we get such a wonderful applause. But also importantly, like you think about what passage is about. And you're thinking about the enslaved Africans, you're thinking about the lives that were lost in the ocean and what it feels to actually be a free spirit. So to start the ballet in that way, it, it gives me a little bit of chills. And then it's like, again, the energy of the in and out sense of this connection to passage and our history and our lineage, it's, it's just mind blowing. So that's one of my favorite moments. Yes, it's so beautiful, it really is. Um, okay. I know I'm talking a lot, but she met, you guys mentioned the swims and I don't know if the other guys feel the same way, but I feel like that is the hardest part of the ballet for me personally. It's like in the beginning and you really have to like know where the lady's weight is like distributed while she's like diving straight down and you know, you want it to look slow and controlled. I think that is the hardest section of the ballet from for me as a man. Dustin, do you want to add anything to the the swim? Movement? Yeah. 
I actually agree with Anthony. It is one of the more difficult parts in the ballet, just because you don't want it to look, there's three, there's four people involved. So in order to make it look smooth, you have to coordinate four people for an extended period of time, at least a minute. And so it gets to be, as long as you do it, the less it becomes uh, coordinated in it. It's different with every woman you do it with too, but when it's done right, it looks really nice. Yeah, it's immediate applause pretty much right from the very get go of the ballet when it's. <laughs> yeah, you hear the audience go, ooh, and then they just start like applauding. And then because you're on stage, you have to try not to be affected by it. You can't like get hyped up because they're clapping or you can't get freaked out because you have a woman in the air. So you have to kind of just keep your, you know, keep your momentum, keep the coordination. So um, yeah, that is a really hard part. And it's so innovative. I had, I've had i never seen that in any other ballet and I go to the theater a lot. So um, that's a really awesome, cool innovation, Claudia. Um, <laughs> let's, we're gonna take some of the questions that came in from YouTube, all right? Um, so someone has asked, what is your favorite music to dance to? Does anybody wanna take that? I mean, I'll just say I like classical music. Um, anything that like is I normally like more upbeat music. Um, I have an affinity for <laughs> Baroque music, <laughs> um, but you know, at dance theater, we dance to a lot of different styles of music. So uh, I like all music. I think Yannette was raising her hand, Yannette. Yeah, um, DTH, I like Vessels. It's a great and beautiful music. Like it's it's just stunning, but in general, uh, classic music. I love classical music. My favorite is Manon from the ballet. Manon, it's just stunning. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I really like hip hop music. Uh, but I would say that I spend my like most of my time listening to classical music just because our work day is like you know six hours and and through the work day we're gonna be listening to mostly classical music. I like to dance. I feel inspired by by like hip hop music. Um, but my favorite classical composer, I would have to say is Maurice Ravel. and I don't know. I don't know why I don't have like a great ear for classical music, but his music, I can always tell uh, like when it's him. So, so yeah. All right, anyone else wanna share? Okay, then, oh, yeah, yes. Um, yeah, for me, um, I love like a lot of underground songs that you don't always hear on the radio. I like a lot of alternative um, music or even classical music that has alternative beats to it. Um, there's a composer, I forgot his name, um, but he takes like Bach, for example, but he'll revamp the whole Bach music and just add these weird sounds to it. So I love anything that like just pulls things apart and, you know, anything from MF Doom <laughs> to Talib Kweli, like it's a whole spectrum of stuff that we like to dance to. And then at DTH, you get everything, James Brown, Aretha Franklin and beyond. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and get, move on to our next question from one of our audience members. They want to know how we stay so fit. <laughs> Yannette is already doing her treadmill. I can tell you guys, every time we're at a hotel, you can walk by the gym and she's treadmilling, doing her crunches. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a good question. Um, I think everyone's, um, everyone's styles of staying fit or everyone's systems are different. Um, but I just like the, the work itself kind of keeps you fit. So the more we're dancing, the more fit we'll be. Um, but we do, you know, cross train a little bit by going to the gym. Um, it's not the most fun to go to the gym sometimes, but dancing definitely does it for us. Claudio, yeah. I think uh, Chris is right. Typically, uh, it's just the, the work day that's going to keep us 
in shape. But with coronavirus, there's a lot of opportunity to kind of explore. Well, there's a lot of like a lack of opportunity, like we can't get into the studio as much. Uh, but you can really look at that as, as an op, uh, a moment to like explore new things. And so I found a really nice compliment in uh, yoga. I think it's like a really balancing and meditative the same way that ballet is and uh and is just a really nice it's a really nice compliment and it's a really almost the same thing uh, to be honest and anthony yeah going off of quadia i do feel like yoga has been like a big part of my life since i've joined dance theater of harlem um I just think it's a great way to like center your mind, body, and spirit all in one. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's just, um, it's not as extreme as ballet, if that makes sense. Um, it's a little more lax, but you're putting in just as much effort. Um, and yeah, it's just really good for like the, the soul, I believe. Yeah, those cross training things, I think I found very valuable as well. All right, shall we move to our next question from the chat? Let's see. Okay, is there a favorite part of the piece? Uh, is there a favorite part of Passage than anyone? We talked about some of the hard parts. What's our favorite parts? Uh, I saw Daphne. Hand. <laughs> yeah, there are two, and I feel like there's spoiler alerts um, if you haven't you know, seen the work already, but there's one part where the women bore into a line and we do it twice. And then there's a part where the women actually separate into a diagonal. And I'm at the very back upstage of the diagonal so I can see all the women. And it's one of the most gorgeous things I've experienced along with the music. So that's definitely one part. Um, and there's another part at the very end where Anthony is at the center of the stage and he's on the floor and he's been there for quite some time. And there's a part where Yannette and I are walking in sync. The whole company is just together walking in sync, looking over Anthony and picking him up. And I just think about how beautiful these, these two ladies picking up this guy and we're reaching out and it, it becomes a yoga. It becomes a practice, this meditative moment on stage where it, it, it's an outer body experience for me at times. And you just see the audience, you can feel their energy at that same moment. So those are two of my favorite parts, look out for it. Um, Amanda, go ahead. Um, there are several favorite parts in this ballet, um, but I don't wanna give away too many, um, but one that for some reason right now is sticking out to me is this particular waltz circle. Um, it's like, there's something magical about it when we all get on stage and we make this, there's just this like whirlwind effect that happens. And then there's after this section happens, there's this first moment of silence and stillness. And we all are just standing next to each other on stage um, before we move on to the next Section. And I don't know, every time I do it, I feel like the most free being um, that I can be. And yeah, I think that is one of the top, top ones for me. I mean, there's so many, but that one really sticks out to me, for sure. Anthony. So I have two, I'm just gonna put four fingers up. I have two moments that are like really just like so, incredible it gives me chills every time so the first moment would be where um it's right before amanda and i's uh pot of de, um in the middle of the ballet but um it's it's the walks into the pot of de. so there's so much movement going on and then me and her walking down but like looking at each other and it's so intense and it's just such a like a moment every time it feels different but it's just so incredible so that's my first one. And then the second one will be towards the end of the ballet 
everyone's exhausted. Um, like Claudio said earlier, the music is really pumping you and pushing you to like keep going. And I like dive in this like group of men and they lift me and um, it's just, it just feels so good each time. Like I trust all of them and I literally like dive in to be like lifted and I see everyone on the ground. So it's quite incredible. So those are my two favorites. Crystal. I think this is everybody's favorite part. Um, when we all have to do a ponche, or it feels like a ponche arabesque in the dark. Um, well, maybe it's not the favorite, but it's my favorite because I'm very thankful. I am in the back and I can spot the floor because there's tape, there's always tape for my spacing right in the front. So I can spot that. But I'm just so thankful that I'm back there. But no, it's an incredible piece, part. Um, I also feel like sometimes the hardest moments are less appreciated. So I really want people to be on the lookout for that part because it's really hard, even though it may not look like it. And Claudio, yes, add. Yeah, that part Crystal's talking about I am in the front, so I'm looking into the darkness. And uh, many times I have been in my head like, just don't fall, just don't fall, just don't fall. Uh, and my feet are kind of like going crazy on the floor. That's definitely a kind of like show-stopping moment. I think that's another moment that you really don't see. It's this very long pause, and we're all kind of suspended there in the air best. So that's definitely, that's one of my favorite moments, not because of the physicality of the work or because it feels like good, but because I know that we're kind of like a part of something that's, that is rare to see. It's like almost, it's, it's, it's like everybody in the piece is out on stage in that moment and in the arabesque. Um, and another part that comes to mind is, and, and Crystal, I think will remember what I'm talking about. There's, this moment where we're going to, we're running to each other to go into the circle. Uh, and I always wait as long as I can so that Crystal has to jump really far. She, so she has to jump to me and grab onto me. She hooks her arm over my shoulder. And I always like each time try to like push it uh, more and more and wait longer and longer so that she has to jump uh, really far. And I think it's, I think it's exciting for both of us. I think I always I'm kind of like in the wing, like with this like mischievous smile on my face because I <laughs> I know she's gonna have to really jump this time because I'm not gonna come out until like the very last second. I love it. Um, go ahead, Crystal, you have a response. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. What's funny is um, that part is also one of my favorite parts because I feel like I don't even think that he's planning that but now I know but what's funny is like every time I'm like going for it he like kind of laughs and he it's like he was not like he wasn't expecting it kind of away um but that is always fun because I feel like without knowing that that's he, what he's thinking um I'm just like I'm gonna go for it and you better catch me because that's your job well that's what I'm thinking <laughs> but that's funny that he mentioned that part and I saw someone else wanted to add something. Just want to add. Okay, Yannette. Yeah, for me, um, well, I love a lot of parts, but uh, for me, it's like right before a Derrickson IPA. It's like, because like you guys are dancing around, like running, and then it's like, the storm like is this a storm and after the storm is the calm like it's so calm it's like i remember lynn's uh one time you were like yeah every time before your pie is like you bring you bring in the light and i was like really <laughs> but yeah i just love and also some parts in the past day like we do this on shed and he lifted me on his shoulder i can see the entire audience because he's so tall it's just like yeah it's just it's beautiful yes oh, that pa i think i like 
because you bring the light and then you arabesque and you like bend in half and then promenade. I'm always like, I, I don't even understand the mechanics of it, but it's such a beautiful moment also. So everyone will have to wait for that until the end. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on to another question. Um, someone in the audience asked, um, how is it putting yourself into the work? Do you like that or is it uncomfortable? Um, Claudia, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, I think often when we start this piece, I'm really uncomfortable, to be honest. It starts with this like long hold with the woman on uh, your shoulder before. So we set the woman there before the curtain goes up. And then like Daphne talked about, the curtain goes up and there's, it's hot because of the lights backstage. And then all the heat kind of like goes uh, out into the audience or the cold air from the audience uh, comes in. And it's not until, it's really not until that that arabesque part is over, that very calm arabesque part is over that I start to feel like relaxed or comfortable uh, because there are some really technically challenging things that come up in the beginning of the piece. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it is. I think it is really challenging and I, I, I don't think it is always comfortable. I don't think. And, and Dustin, you had something to say as well. Yeah, I was going to add that um, it can't be uncomfortable, but I think that it's probably the most one of the most important parts in creating a work is a lot of choreographers don't want to necessarily run robots. They want to work on visual people and personalities that they can uh, pull from and add to. So I think that it's it can be uncomfortable, but it's really necessary in order to get, it, especially in a group work or something in order to bridge the gap so that it can be uh, not just a, a mechanical, but art. Yeah, very well said. And I think that is one of the beautiful things too about having a work choreographed on the company versus being set is that it allows for a little bit more in the world. Um. Yes. Um, you know, Lindsay, you just made a really good point about, because you know, for dance theater, a lot of us, um, like when I joined the company, a lot of the rep was already in place. So you were being taught the ballets. So when you have the opportunity for a choreographer to come in, um, it takes on, sorry, my dog is really just not having a good time back there. I don't know what's happening. We're just gonna let him live his life. Um, we, um, we love to have ballets made on us because like Dustin said, you your personality and all of those things get to come forward. And even though there is something we're trying to say with Passage, we're commemorating the, the first Africans coming into America, but it's not a strictly narrative work. So within the, the steps that Claudia has given us, she's still expecting for us to say something for ourselves. And that's one of the really amazing things about having a living, breathing choreographer in the room is that they give you that license and that agency to do that and then sometimes they'll say, okay, well, that wasn't the right choice. Try something different. And then it becomes a collaborative, um, a collaborative effort. So that's always um, just really special. Uh, we do have another question that came into the chat. Um, they're asking, is this the longest piece you've been in? Yeah, no. <laughs> Most of us know. Anthony. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna. I was just gonna say no. <laughs> no, it does feel longer than twenty minutes, though. I don't know for anyone else. For me, sometimes, especially, I remember Kennedy Center. I was like, "Oh my god, this is like a forty-minute ballet," but it's just because, um, like Crystal said earlier, there's so many ins and outs, and it's it's you know, there's a lot of technically challenging moments. Um, there's a lot that happens throughout the ballet, so it feels longer than 20 minutes, but no, it's definitely not the longest. Yeah, sometimes, um, I know for me, like I've done full length ballets with other, um, with other companies, so that's like a full, you know, full, full evening of that one story. So, um, but for, for dance theater, that is one of our longer, 
one of our longer ballets. Um, and when you have live music, sometimes depending on how it's conducted, it can take a little longer if things are drawn out versus if you're conducting a little faster. So um, it's not the longest. <laughs> Well, shall we keep going through the questions just to make sure we can get them all in? Um, someone asked about the costumes and asked if they were hand painted. Um, so would anyone like to talk about that? Yes, Dad. Um, I don't believe the costumes were hand painted. Um, I know that they were originally designed and then cut out of different fabrics that were then sewn on to the leotard and um, unitard base. Um, there was a moment where we had an issue with one of the costumes and our amazing wardrobe supervisor, Katie, was able to physically hand paint at one time the same design that's featured on the costume. And from far away, you just couldn't tell um, that it was hand painted by her while the others were properly sewn. But um, no, they were uh, strips of fabric that were cut out um, and then sewn onto the costume. And I think for me and my my interpretation of that was it, it kind of looks like kelp or like seaweed, like we're in the water and you kind of see the lights kind of reflect that on the gobo um, on stage too. So, yeah. Yes, and a shout out to Martha Chamberlain for designing the costumes and custom making them. Cause they really, I feel like on everybody's skin tones, they just make everybody pop and it looks so beautiful. Anthony. And I just want to shout out Katie Freeman for just like always being there and always like being ready for anything. Go Katie. Katie Freeman is our wardrobe supervisor. Um, and she always does a fabulous job at creating and being in the moment and keeping us all well steamed and taken care of. So Katie, we miss you <laughs> if you're out there. I think you're still on mute, Christopher, if you're talking. Aha. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's always so funny when people do that and you're like, uh, have we not gotten used to this yet? Um, but there is another question that came into the chat that is asking, is it common for dancers to perform with the composer? Um, and I think normally because ballet is such, um, a historic and a, it's a, an old art form, if you will, um, a classic art form. A lot of those composers are no longer with us. So you wouldn't, you're not gonna perform with Bach. It's just not gonna happen. Um, but you know, in more of the contemporary works and some of the newer um, and more innovative pieces, you do get that opportunity, um, but it is a very unique and special opportunity. So we're, we're very blessed in that way at DTH. Absolutely. Um, so in order to, I think one of our last questions that we have, um, someone asked, uh, do all the ladies wear the same brand of point shoes? I know we're all shaking our heads. No, we do not. I know some companies do have a required brand. Um, who wants, to, I know, um, Daphne, actually, you're, you're an ambassador for your brand as well as Amanda. So why don't you guys talk about, uh, your what you wear. Yeah, um, for each of the ladies and, and in the dance world in general, point shoes are very personal. So everybody has a different preference. And um, going through your training into professionalism, you may have tried out all, almost every single brand of point shoes. But yeah, we have, we each have our own favorites that we rock and that we wear. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't know if Amanda could chime in. Uh, yeah, I agree with Daphne. I mean, we all have our different point shoe journeys. Um, you know, I started with Shirtbots and now I'm with Block and I love Block and I stay with Block. Um, so yeah, and everybody has different shapes and sizes of uh, feet and ankles and toes and things like that. So it takes a second, but you find a brand. Absolutely. So. Um, well, it looks like that is about all the time we have for tonight. So first of all, thank you, cast members. You were fabulous. Um, thank you for sharing your experiences and your journey. Thank you, everyone watching and tuning in tonight. 
Uh, we wanted to also remind you that um, we have an event tomorrow as well around passage and we'll be showing the full work on Saturday on YouTube. Muted again. Yes. Um, and so tomorrow night at eight, we are showing uh, a video produced by two of the company artists um, celebrating the two black women creators, um, Claudia and Jesse. And then on Saturday, you see the full ballet at eight o'clock on our YouTube. So you don't want to miss it. Um, we want to thank Bloomberg Philanthropies for their generous uh, sponsorship of DTH On Demand. Shout out to our amazing artistic director and executive director and our marketing team. Um, yeah. <laughs> the sirens are going, the dog is barking, it's celebratory. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you uh, to our stage manager for keeping our stream yard rolling tonight. And thank Absolutely. you all. Hi, you're amazing. Thank um, you, Lindsay. <laughs> and Christopher, thank you. It's always fun to chat with you. Um, <laughs> such a wealth of ballet knowledge, so. Thank you. Well, that's all for...